All right, more mundane news now. The upside down world of politics continues as the main political parties seem to struggle with their traditional identities. Now, the Libs have gone all green left recently, while Labor, they're making soothing sounds about fiscal sobriety and repairing the budget. The Treasurer said that next month's budget will be constrained to bread and butter spending amid rising cost of living pressures and slowing economic growth. The October budget will be a pretty standard bread and butter budget uh, because that's what it needs to be to find room for all of these pressures that Katie and I are outlining today. It wasn't that long ago they were telling us that bread was racist, if you remember, or white bread specifically. Well, frankly, I don't really believe that's what Labor intend to do over the long term. You see, the language they use gives them away. Apparently, we need to have a robust conversation about how to fund future government spending. Well, let me tell you, that's not about government spending less. It's actually going to be a one-way lecture about why the government is going to have to put taxes up so they can spend more for our own good, of course. But I can almost guarantee they'll have proposals for new or increased taxes on high-income earners and corporates. There's likely to be changes to superannuation just to undermine any remaining faith in that system. I mean, how many times have we been told there will be no further tinkering with super rules? It's about become about as believable as a government surplus next year or the year after, or maybe the one after that. I'd suggest there might also be a mooted increase in the GST, but ultimately that will be declared unfair as it doesn't specifically target the rich. And we could even see death duties return under some other name, of course. And so while we don't specifically know what's in the works, let me assure you, Labor will be seeking more money from us rather than less. And how else are they going to pay for their promised childcare welfare, or as they like to call it? Uh, cheaper childcare is cost of living relief with an economic dividend. We're told it's necessary because childcare costs have risen 41% over the past eight years. Well, here's a tip. Perhaps that's because government keeps wrapping these child mining services, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean these early education centres up in so much government tape that it costs a fortune to actually operate them. Or just maybe it could be because successive governments increase the childcare subsidy again and again and again and then the childcare operators increase their prices. The same thing happens with Canberra Hotel accommodation. You see, politicians get allowances for accommodation when they're up there, and when those allowances go up, huh, almost, almost coincidentally, so do the hotel prices, usually by the exact same amount. So in the end, the investment in cheaper childcare will almost certainly not make childcare cheaper. It will only enrich the providers at the expense of taxpayers. And trust me, that's only a single sector. There will be many other schemes that will promise a lot and deliver very little. They'll end up costing tens of billions of dollars and all will be deemed investments by this government. It's a familiar trick. The previous government claimed the same thing. And now Labor decry those as waste and rorts. And when the political cycle turns, you'll no doubt hear the same thing from whomever is next in power.